We all know that digital computers changed virtually every aspect of our life. Well, the arrival of quantum computers could be even more historic than that. We're now in the initial stages of the next revolution. Imagine a machine so powerful that it can perform calculations in seconds that would take today's best supercomputers thousands of years. This isn't science fiction. It's the promise of quantum computing. While classical computers changed the world by harnessing binary code, quantum computers are pushing into an entirely new frontier. They use the bizarre rules of quantum mechanics to unlock speeds and possibilities we once thought impossible. In this video, we'll explore what makes quantum computers so different, why they look nothing like your laptop, and how they could one day reshape medicine, security, artificial intelligence, and even our daily lives. Classical versus quantum thinking. Let's go back to our chessboard example. If you're trying to predict the moves of a grandmaster opponent, a classical computer works step by step. It calculates every move one after another, building a giant tree of possibilities. This works well for smaller problems, but when the number of choices multiplies, it quickly becomes overwhelming. The computer is like a diligent student checking every answer in a huge exam, one at a time, methodically, but slowly. Quantum computing flips this logic on its head. Instead of going through options one by one, it spreads itself across all possibilities simultaneously. Think of it as a lightning storm flashing across the chessboard, illuminating every possible move in an instant. Even though both types of machines still use chips, logic gates, and algorithms, the fundamental difference lies in their building blocks. Classical computers rely on bits, while quantum computers rely on qubits. And that difference changes everything. Superposition more than zero or one. A bit is simple. It's either a zero or a one, like a light switch that's off or on. But a qubit can be zero, one, or both at the same time. This is the principle of superposition. The coin analogy makes this clearer. A coin lying flat shows heads or tails, but toss it into the air, and for that fleeting moment, it feels like it's both. You only know the outcome once it lands. Qubits are like coins forever caught in mid-spin, carrying both states at once. This ability unlocks exponential power. With just two qubits, you can represent four states at once. With 10 qubits, over a thousand. With 50 qubits, more states than atoms in the visible universe. No classical computer, no matter how advanced, can match that scale. Superposition doesn't just make things faster, it changes how problems are approached. Instead of brute forcing each option, quantum algorithms enable researchers to explore entire landscapes of solutions simultaneously, reducing what would otherwise be impossible tasks into something manageable. Entanglement, the quantum web. Superposition alone would already be powerful, but quantum computing takes it a step further with entanglement. When qubits become entangled, their states link together in mysterious ways. Change one, and you instantly affect the other, even if they are far apart. Imagine two dice separated across continents. Roll one in New York, and the other in Tokyo instantly matches. That's entanglement, and it's one of the strangest confirmed phenomena in physics. In a computer, this linking allows multiple qubits to act as one massive system. Operations on a single qubit ripple through the entire web. Instead of isolated switches, you get a synchronized orchestra of possibilities. This makes computations vastly more powerful, allowing tasks to be carried out with breathtaking efficiency. It's no wonder Einstein called it spooky action at a distance. Today, scientists see it as the glue that holds quantum computing together, the hidden force that makes these machines possible. What a quantum computer looks like. When most people hear computer, they picture a laptop, a phone, or maybe a sleek server rack. A quantum computer shatters that expectation. Step into a lab and you'll see something resembling a sci-fi prop. A towering golden chandelier with layer upon layer of polished cylinders, tubes, and wires descends from the ceiling. 
Around it, thick cables snake into cooling systems and control racks. It's both futuristic and strangely delicate. Why does it look like this? Because qubits are extremely fragile. They need to be protected from heat, light, sound, and even the faintest magnetic interference. To survive, they're cooled to near absolute zero, colder than deep space itself. The chandelier structure is actually a complex refrigeration unit, gradually stepping down the temperature until the core reaches a fraction of a degree above minus 273 degrees Celsius. Without this chilling system, the qubits would lose coherence in microseconds, and the computation would collapse. These machines look strange because they're fighting a constant battle against the universe itself, just to keep qubits alive long enough to do their magic. The race to quantum supremacy. For decades, quantum computing was considered theoretical. But in October 2019, Google made history. Using its 53 qubit Sycamore processor, it performed a task in just 200 seconds that would have taken the world's most powerful supercomputer, Summit, over 10,000 years. This milestone, called quantum supremacy, proved that quantum computers could outperform classical ones in specific tasks. The problem Sycamore solved wasn't useful in itself, it was a benchmark test but the implications were enormous. It was the Wright brothers' first flight moment. Short, simple, but undeniable proof that the technology works. IBM quickly pushed back, arguing that Summit could have solved the same problem in days rather than millennia. But even so, the symbolic leap was clear. Since then, tech giants and startups alike, IBM, Microsoft, Rigetti, IonQ, D-Wave have raced to expand qubit counts, improve error correction, and move from demonstrations to real-world applications. Governments are also in the race. The US, China, and Europe are pouring billions into national quantum programs, seeing quantum computing as the next technological arms race. Whoever controls this technology could hold the keys to breakthroughs across medicine, defense, and industry where quantum computers can take us. So what can they actually do? In artificial intelligence, training deep learning models currently requires weeks of supercomputer time. Quantum computers could collapse that into hours, accelerating everything from speech recognition to robotics. In cybersecurity, they represent both a threat and a savior. Powerful quantum computers could one day break current encryption standards in minutes, at the same time, they could introduce unbreakable quantum encryption, safeguarding data against intrusion. In medicine, the applications are astonishing. Drug discovery today relies on trial and error with vast chemical libraries. Quantum computers could directly simulate molecular interactions, speeding up cures for diseases like Alzheimer's or cancer. In climate modeling and weather forecasting, they could untangle chaotic systems, giving us better predictions for hurricanes, droughts, and climate change effects. In energy and materials science, they could help design better solar panels, room temperature superconductors, or ultra-efficient batteries. Imagine an electric car that charges in seconds and drives for a thousand miles. From finance to logistics, transportation to aerospace, the ripple effects are nearly limitless. Any field involving enormous data sets and countless variables could be transformed. The roadblocks ahead. For all the excitement, we must be realistic. Quantum computers are still fragile prototypes. Most machines today use only dozens of qubits, and those qubits are noisy. Errors creep in constantly. Scientists must run complex correction algorithms just to keep them usable. The problem of decoherence, when qubits lose their quantum state, is one of the greatest challenges. Even the tiniest disturbance from the outside world can cause calculations to fail. That's why so much engineering effort goes into cooling systems and isolation chambers. Scaling up is another hurdle. To do world-changing work, we'll likely need millions of stable qubits, not just dozens or hundreds. Reaching that level could take decades, along with entirely breakthroughs in hardware. Then, there's the cost. Quantum computers are massive, delicate, and incredibly expensive to build. It's unlikely you'll ever own one at home. Instead, 
Access will likely come through cloud services, where you rent time on quantum machines maintained by companies like Google, IBM, or Amazon. So while the vision is dazzling, the path ahead is long and uncertain. A glimpse into tomorrow. Still, progress is accelerating faster than skeptics predicted. Ten years ago, many doubted we'd ever see quantum supremacy. Now, quantum devices are running real experiments, and industries are actively preparing for the quantum era. Universities are creating dedicated programs for quantum engineers. Startups are experimenting with hybrid models, where classical and quantum computers work together for practical solutions, and nations are drafting policies to prepare for a post-quantum world. It's easy to imagine a future where you don't think about quantum computers directly. They'll be quietly humming away in the background, solving problems for hospitals, weather services, logistics companies, and financial firms. You may never own one, but you'll feel their impact in medicine, transportation, communication, and even the energy that powers your home. And maybe, on a lighter note, they'll even help solve smaller mysteries like where all your missing socks disappear to, or why you keep forgetting why you walked into the kitchen. Conclusion Quantum computers represent more than speed. They mark a fundamental shift in how we process information. By embracing superposition and entanglement, they allow humanity to explore problems once considered unreachable. The road is filled with obstacles, technical, financial, and practical. But history shows us that every leap in computing seemed impossible before it happened. The first digital computers were the size of rooms. The first microchips looked like fragile toys. Today, we hold supercomputers in our pockets. Tomorrow, we may harness the raw power of the quantum world. When that day comes, we'll look back at these strange chandelier-like machines and realize we were witnessing the beginning of a revolution. The future of technology isn't just binary anymore. It's quantum.